I'm going to do a review or share my experience taking the ICND2 200-105 exam for routing and switching. I previously did a similar video for the ICND1, so if you want to go watch that too if you haven't. Um, so these are the things I'm going to cover in this video. So the first one, I'll, the topic's covered. Um, this is a link where they have the specific topics covered, so I'll show you that now. And I'll include all the links in the description of this video. Um, yeah, so these are the five sections and their weights. Obviously, routing and switching are going to have the biggest ones. Um, yeah, not too much to say about all this, just that you have to know all of it. Um, I mean, they're going to ask you at least a question on all of these. And some of them, they're going to go more in depth. So just make sure you know all of them. Uh, these ones you want to pay attention to, uh, especially right here, 5.5. This is referring to uh, SDNs or Software Defined Networking, which is kind of a newer uh, networking technology um, that is going to be pretty big in the near future. So they're going to ask you some theory questions on this. So don't, I just want to say don't, like definitely know these because they're the biggest weight, but don't neglect these sections down here because they add up. Um, so just make sure you go through all these and make sure you have a good understanding of all of them. Um, so the format of the exam, I went over this in the my previous video, but if you didn't watch it, uh, I'll show you the link. Uh, these are the seven types of questions we'll have on the exam. And you could actually go to that link. And if it doesn't play, do right click and hit play. And these are the actual, what the exam looks like exactly. So you could just go through, see the different type of questions and um, kind of get an idea before you go into it. Because they're going to make you go through a similar tutorial like this. So if you already know it ahead of time that'll that'll just help um let's see so the materials and resources i used to study were actually quite different compared to what i used the first part for the first exam the first exam i used a course on udemy but for this one i found this uh safari books online and this is what it looks like this is the online book so I'll show you both of these, and these are the main ones I used, being this one being the most useful. So Safari Books Online, um, you can do a 10-day free trial, and they're going to ask you an email, but they're not going to verify your email. So you could just make up an email, a username and password, and then after your 10 days, you could just make another one, and that's just how their system works. So. Yeah, so if you go in here, this is um, this was a great book and had the most detail and everything I needed to know. And you can just go in here and they have all the different sections. And within the sections, they have, um, let me just make sure I pick the right one. Within the sections, they have, um, oh, I think my uh, <laughs> trial ended. But they have quizzes for each of these sections. So... What I did was take all the questions in all these chapters, put them in a Word document, and that's how I would practice, and I would read through all these. So this was my number one resource, which I found the most helpful. The second one was on this same website. Um, this is by a different person that wrote the book, but this is a vis video, and I'm a visual learner, so for those of you who are the same, you could uh, check out this link and just like the book was set up, they have all these um, sections and you just go and watch the video. So my main resource was going between the two. Uh, my third one I didn't use too much was this one. Um, currently, he's still updating the course and it doesn't have as much information as these two. So, uh, I mean... I get it just because why not, but between these two, I think it's enough because they're both done by two different people. 
so you get multiple sources of information. Um, so some of the frequently asked questions about the second part is how difficult is the ICND-2 compared to the ICND-1? Um, it is definitely ramped up in difficulty. I'm going to say it's pretty difficult depending on your experience beforehand, but compared to the first one, it's way more in depth. You got to wait. You got to know the same or more topics, but just even more in depth. So you definitely got to know your stuff. Um, what is it like? What does it feel like to fail? Well, now I can tell you because the first time I took the ICND2, I failed it. And, you know, you're losing money and you feel like you're losing time because you spent all that time studying and you failed. And there's part of you that really just wants to, like, be like, do I really need to take this exam? Like, maybe I shouldn't take it. Like, you start to doubt yourself, but you just take a day or two off let just relax let your mind just relax and then get right back into it and just study 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 and take it again and i recommend doing it soon because you don't want to just let all that information you just studied you know forget it so i would take a day off and get right back into it um depending on how bad you failed i was Based off my score, I would say I was probably like four or five questions away from passing. So I knew I knew most of it. So I took it um, 10 days after I failed it. So depending on how bad you fail, you just want to take that time accordingly um, to study. But yeah, just get right back into it and don't get down about it. I mean, the first day you will be, but just take a day off. Um, so after you pass the ICND-2, how long does it take Cisco to approve your two parts of the exam into the CCNA certificate? I took mine at 9 in the morning, and I got, I was, they emailed me saying I got my CCNA later that day. So, they say it'll take up to 10 days, but it took less than 24 hours for me, and where they actually recognized my CCNA certificate. So, that was nice. Um, is there enough time to complete the exam? Yeah, there is, but um, this one's a lot harder than the first one, so you're probably going to use more of your time, so there's less time to waste, so that's why you got to know your stuff even more, because you can't be wasting time on stuff you don't know. Um, so how do you know when you're ready to take it? Um, I would say going through these, just be confident, and don't like, just be confident you know all of these and when you know those then I think you're ready but make sure you know them and the way I studied was I say okay Monday I'm gonna go through all these make sure I know them read watch the videos do hands-on do all this the next day I'm gonna go through this and then third day and I kind of split it up and then then I review them one day all of them and then kind of just repeat so that's how I studied. So when you know all these, then you're ready. Um, so some advice. Use more than one resource. So like I said, these two are by two different people. So they give you a wide range of uh, information. Use the elimination technique for router configuration troubleshooting. So they're going to say, hey, there's something wrong with this configuration between all these routers tell us why and it's gonna be a four-part multiple choice well a mistake i made on the first exam was you just dive in and start looking at the config take each question each answer and confirm that it's true or false and do a process of elimination and that'll help you save time um Another thing I say, and I've heard from other people, is if you have to cram information in an hour before you take the exam, then you're probably not ready. So before you take the exam and the day before, it should probably just be review and going over things. Um, and also just be confident. Just go in there. Be confident that you know your material and you're going to do good. And uh, if you guys have any other questions, just put them in the comments below, and I'll answer them as quickly as I can. Thanks for watching.